What's up everybody? Today we have ourselves a quick fast tool review. I'm gonna try and give you the details as quick and fast as I can. That way you can get the information you need and make the best purchase decision that fits you. Today we're out on my grandpa's farm with my cousin Cody. Say hi Cody. <laughs> what, a, what a champion of a helper. And we're gonna test these three pull saws. We've got the Husqvarna saw, we've got the Milwaukee saw, and then we've got a good old gasoline steel HT-133, which is the biggest powerhead still sells for a pull saw. So we're gonna run them through the paces here and see how they compare against each other. All right, first up is the gasoline powered steel. We gotta start it to begin with. A little bit chilly today. Oh my. Next up, we have the Husqvarna. Don't have to start it, but it does have a power button we gotta turn on. Last the list is the Milwaukee. It doesn't have any power functions. All we gotta do is depress the safety on the back of the handle and she's live. Something notable about electric pull saws versus gas pull saws is you can put this part of the saw against your body and kind of use it to help stabilize things when you're reaching up really high. So here we have a really high branch. It's about maximum extension for us. And I can cut it off and not drop the saw and be controlled the whole way. Well, everybody, we ended up trimming all six of these trees, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and we got all this brush down. We did almost all of it on just the Milwaukee saw because we kind of liked that one the best and it was working really good for us. And we didn't run out of battery. It was really close to the end. You could tell it was kind of getting tired, but it did a lot of cutting this afternoon. Let's run into the shop and go over some specs and weigh them and just check them out. We're gonna go ahead and weigh these things. I've got the scale zeroed out with the rope on it. So that way you'll be only seeing the weight of the actual tool. They're all full and they all have the biggest batteries on them. So that way you can know the maximum weight. First up, we have the steel gas pull saw and that comes in at 18.7, ooh, 18.9 pounds. Next up, we have the Milwaukee's pull saw hanging. It comes in at 19.1 pounds. Last on the rope is the Husqvarna pull saw. Comes in at 16.7 pounds. I took a moment to find the balance point of every single pull saw and then tied a clove hitch on each one so you can kind of see where they're at. All the saws are even across the back here. The two electric saws are about the same length and Kami's a little bit shorter. And so you can see that's fair representation in there. It is also worth noting that Milwaukee has the motor in the back and a straight steel shaft all the way up to a gearbox and oil reservoir on the head. And Husqvarna has just the battery back here and they put wires through the shaft and then the motor up near the head. That's why the balance point on the Milwaukee is back farther. The gas saw, obviously all the power and weights back there. 
Something else I want to show you guys is that Milwaukee does this cool thing where they include a scrunch in all of their chainsaw tools. So this thing is latched in here. Even if you try to get it out, you can't get it out while the battery's in there, which is a nice safety feature. You can't be working on your tool while it's energized. So if you take the battery out, flip it over, push this out. Oh, it's even in there pretty good. Slide it off of there and there you go. You have what you need to adjust your chain tension and take things apart and clean them if you need to and all everything like that. Now, Milwaukee did give me this saw. They gave it to me. So I, you know, it could be perceived that I may have some bias. And so I want to get you guys an opinion, a third party opinion that I should have no biases because he didn't receive any benefit from this situation. He was just out here helping me. Cousin Cody, which was your favorite saw and why was it your favorite? I'm going to go with the Milwaukee. Uh, and as you guys probably know, our family has always been a steel family. We love our steel products. We love Husqvarna too, but uh, we love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, when we were using all three of these, I thought Milwaukee was just a step above in regards to pure power, cutting ability. Yes, it's a little bit heavier, but I also think it's it, it's made a little bit better as well. So yeah, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm going to stick with the Milwaukee and probably buy one myself too. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So part of this, part of the reason we put this together was we need to trim some trees here, but also cousin Cody was looking at buying a couple, he was looking at buying something. And so we thought this was a good opportunity. So he's going to go out and buy one and I'm definitely going to hang on to this one. And, uh, I think if you have to pick one, I'd say the Milwaukee is the way to go. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you on the next one. As I was returning all those pole saws to the people I borrowed them from, friends of mine, <laughs> I was talking to them and I realized I forgot to include a couple key features about the Milwaukee pole saw. For one, it's got this really nice big collar for tightening and loosening the telescoping features. You can grab onto with gloves. It's rubberized. It's got a texture on it. You can grab it and turn it and you can get it really tight and you feel secure. The Husqvarna one was a, just a little bit smaller and it wasn't rubberized. It has a rib texture on it. It's just a little bit harder to get your hands on. And if you got to take your gloves off in the cold to get onto it, it's kind of just a little bit harder on your hands. So I really like this. This shaft also has a square shape. And I don't know if it's clear on camera, but it uses this kind of rounded off square to keep the head oriented upright. I believe the Husqvarna pull saw uses a keyway in the bottom here. And that does the same job and it probably is just as effective. And I, I can't even say which one is more sturdy. Um, but I can tell you that this kind of square shape is nicer to hold on to in the hand. It kind of fits in your hand a little bit better and it gives you a little more leverage to rotate and maneuver the pull saw as you may need. So I think that's a nice feature. I also noticed that even though the Milwaukee pull saw was heavier, more of the weight was kind of down behind me. And I felt like I could kind of move that head around more nimbly up in the tree just because there's no motor up there. And so comparing that to the Husqvarna, I felt like I could whip it around better and just get it right where I wanted. I think it's worth mentioning that both the Husqvarna and the Milwaukee pull saws have a handle kind of on the back. I don't know if they're intended to be a handle, but they function as a handle. Uh, I'll leave that up to you as to what you think it's actually for. But... It kind of keeps the battery guarded, but it also you can get your hand around it and it's it's just kind of handy to have down there. I think you saw in one cut I was kind of muscling the pull saw trying to reach as high as I could with it. And on a gas pull saw, you can't put the power head right against you. The muffler will just burn a hole in your clothes and burn you and you just, you, you can't really do that. I've been tempted to do it many times and tried it and it's a bad idea and it's not worth doing, but you can do that with these electric saws. I've said a lot of good things about this Milwaukee pull saw and I think there's a lot of good things about it. But there is room for improvement. Nothing is perfect. There's always room for improvement. And it's actually a really minor thing. All of their other electric chainsaws have a scabbard that snaps on. It positively engages like either around the bar nut or something like that. And this pull saw doesn't. It's just a friction fit. It's not the end of the world, but like 90% of the time you're transporting a pull saw, it's hanging out over the back tailgate of your pickup truck. And I just don't feel good about something that's friction fit hanging out over there, getting caught in the wind and getting ripped off and thrown into traffic. It's a minor detail, but it'd be nice if this was a snap on dealio. Another thing it could use a little bit of improvement is actually the noise this thing produces. I don't know if the camera picked it up real well because I didn't have a special mic with me today when we were filming and we were kind of just using the GoPro mics and they don't do real well. 
But this thing screams, and because the motor is right behind you, I would even advise wearing ear protection. I didn't for this video, and I kind of wish I had, because it was just loud. Loud enough to kind of hurt my ears, and if the ears are hurting, the ears are getting damaged. So that's something that could be a little bit better. Not the end of the world. you got to use ear protection a lot of tree jobs anyway. Last little tidbits of information. I put the prices for all the pole saws in the description below. And then also I thought I'd share with you the horsepower numbers. Milwaukee claims 2.3 horsepower, which is a lot for a pole saw. The steel claims 1.9 horsepower for the HT131 powerhead, which is the biggest powerhead available on pole saws, either combi or traditional telescoping pole saws. And Husqvarna does not list a pole saw horsepower for their electric pole saw. A lot of companies don't list horsepower numbers for their electric equi equipment, and I don't understand that because that's such an important factor. That's like the only thing that you can use to compare gas to electric is horsepower because both machines produce horsepower. One might take volts, one might take gas, but I can't compare 36 volts or 18 volts to a tank of gas, so that's no good for me. But they all produce horsepower, or at least kilowatts. Give us that. We can convert that to horsepower. Anything. Horsepower is what determines how fast something cuts. It's super important. That's all I need is horsepower. Just tell me horsepower. All right, guys, this is the real end of the video. We'll catch you on the next one.